The Pacific Island nation of Tonga has virtually lost contact with the rest of the world after Saturday's volcanic eruption cut the country's internet cable. That eruption sent a tsunami across the Pacific Ocean, one that actually caused an estimated $6.5 million worth of damage around the Santa Cruz Harbor. It was a seemingly typical day on January 15, 2022, until the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano erupted, unleashing a cataclysmic chain of events that shook the world. The resulting tsunami travelled around the globe, leaving destruction in its wake, while a deafening sonic boom echoed not once but twice around the planet. But that was just the beginning. As the eruption continued, a colossal plume of water vapour shot into the stratosphere, filling over 58,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Now, over a year later, scientists have discovered something truly terrifying about the Tonga volcano. What are the consequences of that violent blast? Could it affect the entire planet? The answers will leave you on the edge of your seat. So keep watching until the end, because the most recent findings about this massive volcano will astound you. The depths of the ocean are often shrouded in mystery, but in December 2021, a submarine volcano named Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai decided to make its presence known. A slow and steady eruption began, slowly building towards a climax that would shake the world nearly four weeks later in January 2022. This eruption was a force to be reckoned with, the largest recorded since the infamous Krakatoa in 1883. The eruption triggered a massive tsunami, with waves reaching up to 15 metres high that slammed into the shores of Tongatapu, Ioa and Haapai. The ashfall from the explosion covered at least five square kilometres, leaving a trail of destruction in its wake. The sheer magnitude of the explosion was felt across the world, with the sound heard as far as Alaska, a distance of over 6,000 miles. The resulting tsunami waves travelled across the Pacific, reaching as far as Russia, the United States and Chile. And if that wasn't enough, the eruption also ejected a massive cloud of ash, gas and water over 57 kilometres into the atmosphere, setting a record for the highest plume ever recorded from a volcano. When disaster strikes, the first casualty is often communication. In the aftermath of the eruption of the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano, damage to undersea telecommunications meant that information from Tonga was scarce. But even without clear information, the destruction was evident. Surveillance flights conducted by the New Zealand and Australian Defence Forces on January 17 revealed the extent of the damage, with houses, roads, water tanks and other infrastructure in disarray on the west coast of Tongatapu, the Haapai Island Group, and Eowa. Realising the gravity of the situation, the Prime Minister of Tonga declared a state of emergency on January 18 and called for international assistance. Although the death toll was relatively low, with only three direct and one indirect fatality officially attributed to the volcano and tsunami, the disaster had a massive impact on the people of Tonga. Early government estimates suggest that 84% of the population, or 84,176 people, were affected, especially by ashfall. Around 3,000 people were displaced, and although many returned to their communities, some families from badly affected islands are still on Tongatapu, trying to rebuild their lives. What happened that day, a year ago, was nothing short of remarkable. The previously unassuming Hunga Tonga Hunga Haapai volcano erupted with unprecedented force, unleashing a massive plume of water vapour, mineral ash and gas into the atmosphere. The explosion was visible to scientists worldwide thanks to the help of three weather satellites that captured the event in real time. One of the researchers who was particularly captivated by the mushroom cloud was Simon Proud, an Earth observation scientist at the STFC Rutherford Appleton Laboratory and the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. Proud was the lead author of a new study that examined the plume and discovered that the Hunga Tonga eruption was unusual. Temperature measurements returned by Earth observation satellites suggested that the volcanic cloud had reached an unprecedented altitude and its behaviour puzzled scientists. When the cloud was developing, we were looking at the temperatures based on the satellite data, Proud said. It went through the troposphere, where the temperature decreases with height, and then it kept getting cooler, 
even though the atmosphere around it should have been getting warmer. To estimate the altitude and the volcanic cloud accurately, Proud realized that he would need to employ a new approach. Typically, scientists use satellite-borne infrared sensors to measure the temperature of atmospheric phenomena and compare it with the surrounding atmosphere's temperature. This method works well for the troposphere, the layer closest to the Earth's surface, where temperature decreases with altitude. However, in the stratosphere, the layer above the troposphere, which ranges from 9 miles to 30 miles, 15 to 30 kilometers, temperatures increase as the ozone layer absorbs ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Therefore, Proud had to devise a more creative method to calculate the altitude of the cloud accurately. Luckily, the eruption was observed by three different weather satellites positioned in geostationary orbit at around 22,000 miles, 36,000 kilometers above Earth's surface, providing Proud with the necessary data to calculate the cloud's altitude using a method called parallax. This technique involves measuring the apparent distance to an object from at least two different locations and is commonly used to determine the distance to stars. Proud had previously used parallax to calculate the altitude of the Chelyabinsk meteor that exploded over Russia in 2013. The Hunga Tonga volcanic cloud's journey was no ordinary feat, piercing not only through the troposphere, but also rising up through the stratosphere and finally settling in the mesosphere at a height of 35 miles. Proud confirms that the cloud is the highest ever observed, breaking a record that has stood for over a century. Even Pinatubo, the iconic volcanic eruption of 1991, wouldn't come close, with its ash only detected at a height of about 25 miles. But what's more, Pinatubo's sulphur dioxide rich debris had a significant cooling effect on the climate, lowering it by 1 degree Fahrenheit. However, the sulphur dioxide content in the Hunga Tonga cloud was far less, and it is unlikely to have a comparable impact on the climate. Proud argues that the significant amount of water released by the eruption could even have a warming effect on the climate in the coming years. Furthermore, a new report has revealed something truly astounding. The Hunga Tonga volcanic eruption in January 2022 set off over 25,500 lightning events in just five minutes and nearly 400,000 in just six hours. This eruption broke all previous records and half of all the lightning in the world was concentrated around this one volcano at the height of the eruption. It's the most extreme concentration of lightning that we've ever detected, said meteorologist and lightning expert Chris Vergaski. This discovery was made by Vaisala, an environmental monitoring company that tracks lightning around the world. Robert Holsworth, the director of the Worldwide Lightning Location Network, another lightning monitoring network, confirmed Vaisala's findings and said that the hunger eruption was absolutely impressive in its lightning activity. Lightning is typically associated with unstable atmosphere and requires warm and moist air, which is why it is often used as an indicator of the climate crisis. And a new study led by Louis Milan, an atmospheric scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, delved into the amount of water vapor that the Tonga volcano released into the stratosphere. The findings suggest that the Tonga eruption is a rare instance of a volcanic event that injects a significant amount of water vapour into the stratosphere. Only two other volcanic events in the last 18 years have come close to releasing such high levels of water vapour at such altitudes. However, the water vapour from those eruptions disappeared quickly. The Tonga volcano, on the other hand, released a surplus of water vapour that could last for years in the stratosphere. This increase in water vapour could have an impact on atmospheric chemistry, which could hasten specific chemical reactions and, in turn, exacerbate the depletion of the ozone layer, albeit temporarily. The reason why the Tonga volcano injected an unprecedented amount of water vapour into the stratosphere is due to its underwater caldera being at the perfect depth, about 490 feet 150 meters, beneath the ocean surface, according to Louis Milan. If the caldera was shallower, there wouldn't have been enough superheated seawater to account for the observed stratospheric water vapour levels. On the other hand, if it was deeper, the eruption may have been muffled due to the immense pressures of the ocean's depths. The effects of the eruption are being felt worldwide, 
as Australia has been hit with devastating floods in the past year. The eastern coastline has experienced extreme weather conditions, leading to huge floods and record-breaking rains. Picture a year's worth of rain falling in just a single week, with northern New South Wales and southern Queensland receiving even more precipitation. It's been the worst flooding in Queensland since 2011, and the explanation behind all these events is the Tonga eruption. But how did it lead to such catastrophic flooding? The sheer amount of water vapour released into the stratosphere altered the weather patterns in Australia, which was already experiencing a La Nina weather cycle. To understand how the eruption triggered the floods, it's crucial to look at what's happening in the stratosphere over Antarctica. The Hungatonga eruption had a significant impact on our planet's climate, and researchers are still trying to piece together the puzzle. The eruption increased the amount of water vapour in the Western Pacific by 20%, which has caused the stratosphere over Antarctica to be colder than usual. This has intensified the polar vortex, or the winds that spin around Antarctica, which in turn has affected one of Australia's climactic drivers, the southern annular mode, SAM. The intense westerlies have lingered closer to Antarctica, resulting in fewer cold fronts and less winds in southern Australia. However, this has caused regions along the east coast to receive stronger onshore winds, leading to more rain and the catastrophic floods that hit Australia in 2022. This sudden transformation from the destructive forest fires of the previous year is a testament to the Tonga eruption's influence on the climate. But there are still many unanswered questions about the eruption, such as its exact impact on Earth's climate and why it erupted with such force after centuries of being dormant. Now, share your thoughts on whether or not another disaster could be imminent. Feel free to leave your opinions in the comments section.